Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Well, they're in. We finally got the parts for our controllers in. I noticed one of the LEDs was out. This one right here, this metal one. So we have a 25% pass ratio or 75% failure ratio. Yeah, taking a look at this is, you can see the black dot, this is one of them that's failed. Yeah, you can see the solder is up on here, These, but this should be good enough. I, I mean, it'd be nice if it was flowing on top of it, but it's not required. And, and as long as it gets underneath it, uh, we should be good. Yeah, because I doubt if it's not a solder problem. We've already, we determined it's not a, there's enough solder on there for them. It's just, it's a pulling apart problem. Oh, that, no, this is just getting weirder and weirder. I wonder if it's because when I heat this guy up, it pushes, and the you know, metal expands when it gets hot. And it's pushing on something. I mean, it's just barely off. My contact. Yeah, see? I can even do it mechanically. Okay. So we've got the... Uh... <laughs> the the Inolux, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, LED data sheet here. And I uh, figured we'd go ahead and take a look at it. Um, oh, here's a recommended soldering pattern. Yeah, see this right? Yeah, I have tried bringing that, that pad all the way up to the edge of this hole. And I haven't figured out how to tell the... Uh, PCB manufacturer to do that. But I haven't had a lot of problems, so I have to admit I didn't really look at it that close closely, right? Anyway, um, that's not why we're here. Um, we're looking for a solder um, reflow oven profile. And, oh, there we go. Reflow soldering. Recommended, recommended tin glue specifications, melting temperature in the range of 178 to 192 C. Based on the recommended reflow soldering profile is as follows temperature indicates are measured on the surface of the LED resin. Alrighty. And this looks fairly standard. So uh, yeah, so it's got a uh, four degree, it's a, if you've never seen one of these things, temperature is, is the y-axis, time is the x-axis. And if you think of it, your board's kind of going through like this, <laughs> which makes which makes sense, right? So uh, unless you have a static oven where you're throwing it in there. But anyway, usually they flow through like this. But um, yeah, so they want to ramp up four degrees C's per second until we get to... Um, the preheating stage, which is between 180 and 200 C. And you'll have to forgive me, I am not a reflow soldering uh, oven expert. I leave it to the experts, <laughs> so, to, so to speak. And uh, anyway, so you preheat it for two minutes at uh, 180 to 200 C, then ramp it up another four degrees C per second. Oh, that's a max. That's why they're putting it in there. So max, they don't want it to go over you don't want a 10 degree per second ramp up time. Anyway, uh, uh, four degrees C per second, uh, rise time, or rise rate, <laughs> temperature rate. And then at 260 degrees C max, is a max temperature, they just want it there for 10 seconds maximum. Let's say 60 second max above 220 C. So they don't want it in the oven for over 60 seconds above 220 C and not over 10 seconds at 260 C. And then they just gonna let it cool down. So they don't really care about this. They didn't specify it. So I had the assembler send me their um, reflow oven profile. And I looked at this briefly and uh, 
I have to admit, I, I, I kind of understand if you look at it, so it's one, it starts out at 150, 160, 170, 190, 210, 235, uh, 250, at 265. Okay, well, 265 is not, that doesn't, I know it said 260 max here, 265 doesn't scare me too much. That drops out the end. So, but I am curious how long this whole cycle is right here because according to this it shouldn't be over 60 seconds above 220 c um and actually it's pretty darn close right there we might even be able to add this whole thing in but yeah but i was looking at this going okay so it's 22 inches per minute i'm not sure what the white green boxes mean they they didn't really Tell me, I guess I'm supposed to know all this stuff, you know, with my extensive uh, reflow oven knowledge. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure electrical engineers that have been doing this for 20 years, the gray beards probably know this well. Anyway, uh, I don't. So uh, white boxes, the editable boxes and the green boxes, what it said, I really don't know. Like maybe you type in the number here and then hit set somewhere on this thing. I don't know, they don't tell me. And at, at 22 inches per minute, I get it, okay. But how many inches is it from 150 to 160? I'm guessing these are like temperature zones, right? So I was just, you know, put the PCB right here and it's going this way and, and it's running at 22 inches per minute and it's gonna hit well, the 150 zone, the 160 zone, the 170 zone, and then the 190 zone. Then the 210 zone, the 235, it looks like just a straight hill, <laughs> right? 60, 150, 60, 70, oh, there's a little bit of a jump. Uh, 90, 210, so it goes a 10 degree per area rise up to 170, and then it jumps 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 degrees, or 15 degrees, and 15 degrees. And that's all fine and dandy too. I mean, we could probably, I was sitting there thinking that, well, I guess, you know, we can assume this. I don't know, if, if this is over 10 seconds, I mean, this whole thing right here looks pretty hot for compared to this guy right here. <laughs> um, but the one thing I, I don't know is I don't know how long this conveyor is. Uh, and I, I, I was looking on here, I don't see a name of it. So really, this thing is is pretty worthless to me. Yeah, I don't know how long this thing is. It, if it's if it's um, 22 inches long, this whole thing will run in one minute. If it's 220 inches long, then it's gonna take it uh, what 10 minutes? Okay, so I googled the uh, reflow oven length just to be just to see if there's like a standard size. And I saw this um, this uh, reflow oven selection, and um, they said sizes 75, 100, 125, or 150 heated length. Uh, the best choice would be 125. I went to their website, and I noticed that they had down here uh, six zones at 75 length, eight at 100, uh, 10 zones at 125, and... Uh, 12 at 150. So I thought, hmm, I wonder, I, that may be standard. I don't really know. I uh, I was gonna count how many zones we have here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zones. Eight zones would be the, the Pyramax uh, 100 inch reflow oven, right? And so, okay, let's see if it's 100 inches, at at 22 inches per minute, it would take it uh, 5.5 about six minutes to get through this oven. Um, that's is that really what? Oh yeah, so about six minutes to get through the oven, and there's what do we say eight zones? Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, eight zones. So if we've got uh, what are we doing here? Oh, six minutes divided by eight. So it takes <laughs> three quarters of a minute 
to get through each zone. Okay, so that's uh, 45 seconds per zone. So let's see, we need a heat up time of 120 seconds. Uh, I'm guessing this would be the heat up. Let's see, so one, two, three, four, 45 times four, 180 seconds. Okay, well that's, that's okay. Well, actually, if this is the heat up time right here, cause it's, 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 I mean, they ramp it up. I, these guys are kind of just doing the, the slow ramp. Let's see, so three times 45 is, I should be able to do this in my head, but I don't want to. <laughs> it's, uh, what is that, 9135? Is that right? I better double check that. Three times 45. Yeah, 135. Okay, so let's, let's say this is our heat up time. Okay, now that I've got you guys back, I was sitting there doing this by myself. Okay, let's assume, so this is 135 seconds. This would probably, um, this would be the ramp up right here. Probably look more like that. Then we're going, then it's jumping 20 degrees, 20 degrees. And I know this graph isn't right. I know it's in, in, increasing all the time. It's gonna look more like the one in that picture, right? Yeah, it's gonna look more like this, <laughs> right? The real thing is gonna look like this, right? But uh, I mean, this is, we're just farting around trying to figure out what's going on here. So they're gonna jump uh, 20 degrees and another 20 degrees. And then here is kind of jumps 15, 15, 15. So it's kind of a, I don't, I don't want to call it a peak, but it's kind of a, actually let's, let's do this because this right here is something that I saw earlier. And then that's going to cause us that, a potential problem. And it's going to come out and it's going to cool off, right? So I, this isn't accurate. Don't hold me to this <laughs> for accuracy. But you can see right here, so it's 210 right here. It's going up to 235. So right here, I'm guessing it's at least 220 degrees. And between here and here is a hundred and basically 35 seconds, which is uh, double, over double, what the max is right here, right? And at 260, so it's 250 here, you gotta assume 260's right here. It's got a whole 45 seconds above 260. So, yeah, I mean, going, going to suit 265 doesn't concern me too much, but keeping it at 260, 260 for, <laughs> you know, for 45 seconds, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, and it's getting, you know, hotter. It's that, that probably is what smoked it. I, I'm guessing. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's my theory. Oh, and one thing I did want to point out as well, this is the recommended reflow soldering profile. Uh, oh yeah. Temperatures indicated are as measured on the surface of the LED resin. I don't know where the LED, re I'm, I'm guessing the resin's in, <laughs> inside the LED. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, if it if they went up to 260 for 20 seconds, it it might not overheat the the LED, but 265 for 45 seconds at least a minimum. Uh, you know, if this zone is is actually um, you know 45 seconds long, yeah, that's that that's probably enough time to to smoke it, and maybe that's why we're getting. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a complete sm <laughs> They didn't smoke all of them, but they smoked a lot of them, right? As we saw. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, that, that's, my, that's my theory anyway. I'm pretty confident we found what the problem is. Uh, anyway, I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them in the comments under the video. And I will see you next time. Don't forget... You can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, 
that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.